this is Gay Polk Payton again, and I'm coming to you with my second blog that I have made, well, that I am making. I guess I'm in the process of making it now since I'm talking to you, huh? Um, but I'm making my second blog um, to give you some idea about some of the things that I've been working on and my latest project, which is my book called This Has Been a Public Service Announcement. This is the cover of the book. Just in case you're looking for it somewhere, um, this is what the cover looks like. So you'll recognize it when you see it at Amazon.com, BarnesandNobles.com, or um, anywhere else you might go and look for look for a book and see it. Um, let's see. I was trying to decide what I was going to talk about today. And I didn't want to go in too hard on the men because I don't want to seem like I'm bashing men and that I'm being mean to men. Because men think that I am very mean. They think, I mean, they are, they think I'm really mean. And I'm not. I'm not mean. I'm just honest. A lot of women don't want to hurt your feelings and they don't want to alienate you. And so they just don't. Uh, <laughs> so because they don't want to alienate you and they don't want to make you mad, they just sugarcoat the truth. And I mean, I run a law office, a courtroom, and an aerobics classroom. I don't know how to sugarcoat the truth and I don't want to learn. Real talk is the only language that I speak. I'm sorry. If it hurts your feelings, you know, it's like they say the hit dog is the one that's going to holler. So if, if I'm hurting your feelings, then that means that you might need to tweak your behavior a little bit so that you can be a little more conducive to the wants and the needs of a woman if the things that I'm saying make you mad. Okay. Now that that's been said, um, I was talking to one of my friends who came to the book signing on Friday and she was telling me about her favorite PSA. And um, even though I didn't want to go in on the men today, I, she said it was her favorite PSA and I've had so many women to tell me that this was their favorite PSA. And because of that, I'm going to go ahead and start with that one. Um, if it bothers you men, I'm just saying, if you see yourself in one of these categories, then you know what I'm saying, tweak your life. Do better because ain't nobody going to deal with this drama. I'm I'm praying that by the time women get to read my book that they're not taking no more foolishness from men. We are not going to be on your sample platter. We are not going to be your um, back door. I'm not going to say that on my blog, but you, we not, we're just not going to do it. We're not going to be the side chick. We're not going to be anything other than the most important woman in your life. And if you're not willing to allow us room to be the most important woman in your life, then you need to keep it moving. Because by the time women get to read this book, I am hoping that they will see their worth and they will understand their worth and they will learn how to love themselves enough not to let a man demote them and reduce them and demean them to something less than what they really are and what God intended them to be, which is the help meet to man. Okay. Anyway, the PSA that I'm talking about um, that I've given you so much warning about is um, my PSA about the six types of predatory men that women might meet when they're out, you know, going out, hanging out with their girlfriends on the weekends, or even if they're going on a date, they may still be going out with one of these guys. So I wrote this PSA um, to tell women about these men so that they can look out for them and know, you know, so they can know it when they see them. Um kind of like reasonable doubt you know the supreme court said we can't define reasonable doubt but they said we'll know it when we see it i want you women out there to know this man when you see them and then uh the guys i want you to recognize if this is you if this person is you then i mean you might need to get some stuff together and um and and try to be a better man um you know i ain't passing judgment i mean i'm just saying Anyway, um, the first type of predatory man that a woman might meet while she's out will be a married man. Now, all married men are not living foul. I don't, I don't believe that. But there are so many married men out there and attached men. I mean, if I get hit on in ten times, if I get hit on ten times during the course of the day, at least seven of those men are going to be either married or attached to somebody else. And it's just like, don't nobody want your wife's table scraps. Have you lost your mind? Nobody is trying to be the background to your wife's foreground. Ain't nobody got time for that. Nobody has time for that. I know I ain't got time for it. Okay, let me put it to you like this. If I was in a play, I wouldn't even have an understudy to fill in for me if I couldn't be there or if I died. If I can't be there, the show is canceled. So that means that I'm the only one or I'm no one to you. So you can just decide before you step to me, understand that if you want to get to know me better, I'm the only one or I'm no one. And it don't matter to me which one you choose because I don't know you anyway. Anyway, so 
married men let's talk about this okay married men usually have a wife i mean it's just like they have a good life with this woman they probably have a mortgage they probably got three cars and two and a half kids and a dog and they got a good life with this woman but they're just greedy and they just go out and on the weekends and they pick up women and they do all other types of foul things and a lot of times their wife is completely oblivious to the whole thing, you know, because she trusts him or she wants to trust him or she just doesn't want to know. Some women just don't want to know if their man is living foul. And I can understand that. But, you know, knowledge is power. And if your man is living foul, you need to know before he, you know, brings you some uh, step kids that you didn't ask for or some diseases that you didn't ask for. So just make sure that you know where you stand in your relationship with your man, even if it's your husband. Um, But anyway, um... This is my thing about married men and single women. Single women. Do for married men what you would want a woman to do for your man if you were married. Leave him alone. Stay away from other people's man. Just leave her man alone. If he has a woman, then he needs to go. And anything he needs to talk about, he needs to talk about that with her. And you definitely don't need to be whining about your personal life and how horrible your boyfriend is treating you or how bad you feel because you can't meet the right guy because you confided in him is going to start with you it's going to continue on the next thing you know y'all going to be texting then he's going to drop by your house and then it's going to be all over but the crying and y'all going to be in, a, in an affair and it's, it's just not worth it it's just talk to yourself write in your journal facebook about it blog about it you know, I write in my journal and that helps me. It really helps me to deal with the situations that I come that are confronted with that I'm confronted with in my life. And so just do it. I mean, it ended up I ended up writing a book because I wrote down everything that I was dealing with. And so um I ended up writing a book. So you never know, you may end up writing a book because of the things that you're going through, but give yourself an opportunity to not end up in some kind of love triangle that can make either one of y'all end up dead just in case i mean you know he his wife might be crazy you you never know some women will die for their love and or go to prison for it anyway the next type of man you might meet will be a separated man separated men oh my god child they come in like five different categories it's it's, it's a mess with separated men because <laughs> and this is funny but it's not it's tragic but separated men it, it okay for instance Separated man may still be at home with his wife, but they not speaking to each other. They living on the same roof. They not speaking to each other. And he probably just joined some internet dating sites and uh, in inboxing women on Facebook, you know, just so he can see what's out there before he actually moves out and, and, you know, messes up his financial interests. So watch out for that dude, you know, make sure you know where he lives and, you know, you need, but, but you need an executed divorce decree. You need to ask the question, are you divorced? Has a chancellor, has a, a divorce judge signed a paper emancipating you, emancipating you from marriage? Have you been released from the marriage contract by a court order? Be that specific because men don't know what divorce means, or at least they pretend that they don't know what divorce means. They think that if they're going through a divorce, I'm, yeah, I got my quote things up, going through a divorce, that's not the same thing as being divorced. Going through a divorce, that's something totally different. So just make sure you know what's going on with this guy. Ask questions. Ask lots of questions. Um, then you got another guy. <laughs> this is, uh, I live in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and there's a military base here. And so uh, there are a lot of guys going to Camp Shelby here in Hattiesburg, and they're on military, mi military deployment in Hattiesburg because it's a mobilization unit and, you know, that's sending soldiers away. At least it used to be. It's not as much uh, anymore, but there are always guys coming here for summer camp for two weeks. And, you know, you just have to be careful. Girl ain't even safe in Walmart when all those soldiers are here you can't go to walmart i can't even go to walmart dressed like i'm going to the gym or with uh jeans and a bandana on my head because they haven't seen a woman anyway i'm not gonna go there um so just watch out for these guys on military deployment because they will say that they're separated because of the fact that they're living temporarily in hattiesburg and their wife is in north carolina south carolina missouri california their wife could be anywhere and they consider themselves to be separated, but she doesn't consider herself to be separated. So you end up um, spending time with this man. And then when he goes home to wherever he's from, his wife is going to be sitting there waiting and waving a, an American flag with the kids because she has no idea that he considers himself to be um, separated. 
Because they not separated. They just living somewhere different because he's in the military. I mean, use common sense, ladies. Come on. Um, the, um, third one is, this is the third type of separated man. I mean, I hadn't even gotten to the third type of man you're gonna meet out there. So I'm trying to make this quick, but it's just like I have so many editorial comments and it just, ugh, it gets crazy. Anyway, um, the third type of separated man you might meet is one who has actually moved out, but he's living on his own. He hadn't filed any paper, so he's still married and he's not even trying to get divorced. He's still married. But he's living on his own, but, you know, it's like he ain't got no money because the child support might be, he might be having to pay child support. He may be having to uh, take care of the household that he was living in, like he's, like he's still living there, but he's living somewhere else. And so you might, the, the single girlfriend might end up footing the bill for everything. And then, you know, if y'all have an argument and things don't work out between y'all, what are you going to do? He's going to tuck tail and beg his way back into the house. So just don't, you know, don't go there. If you don't have a man with an executed divorce decree or a man who is legally single, leave him alone. The uh, fourth type of uh, separated man is a man who moved out. He living with his mama. Yeah, he living with his mama. And his mama is probably the reason why he separated in the first place because she won't mind her own business. And he won't move out of his mama's house with those foster kids that she got living over there. But but he broke. He ain't got no money because, the you know, it, there may have been some paperwork filed and he got this withholding coming out of his check. And they taking they got three kids, so they taking 22 percent of his income. And, I, you know, I just just don't don't go there if he's not single leave him alone i don't know how many ways i can say let me say it one more time uh one more way this is the fifth type of um separated man you might meet the man who is like living his own life they're publicly living their own lives his wife is living her own life publicly he's living his own life publicly but they still are not divorced what's gonna happen with this man is that um he is going to um die eventually i mean i'm not i'm not wishing death on him but he's gonna die eventually and if he dies without a will or if you're not a joint title owner on some property with him like joint tenants with rights of survivorship with me which means that when he dies it goes directly to you automatically or if you're not on an account with joint tenant as joint tenants with right of survivorship or if you're not a beneficiary on a life insurance policy and he hadn't willed anything to you then everything is gonna go to the wife and kids you will get nothing no matter how long you've been separated there is no common law marriage in the state of mississippi that ended in like 1954 1956 so you living with him and being his common law wife no ma'am that's not gonna help you so if your man is still legally married you need to make sure that he gets on his business i mean that's just trifling though how are you gonna be separated for 10 15 years and still not be divorced i've seen it happen but i just i, I still don't understand i don't think i ever will okay the third type of man that you might meet out there are men who are in a relationship. Same as married men. Um, they're in a relationship and they have a girlfriend. She's either in town or out of town, but he cheats on her constantly because he's unfulfilled somehow. So you decide that you're going to fill in the gaps between him and his, you know, where the fulfillment is missing. You're going to go in there and, and take care of that. And then you end up in the middle of this love triangle. And what you need to understand about this man that he loves this girl that he's in a relationship with. And if things get crazy and she confronts both of y'all, he's going to turn on you. He's not going to turn on her. He's going to turn on you. And you're going to be out there by yourself. So don't, you know, if you got a man, you know he's in a relationship. Don't go busting the windows out of his car. Don't, don't go and cut his tires. Don't be confronting him with the woman because if you do that, and you knew from the door that he had somebody else. So don't go and confront them in public and make a fool out of yourself because it's not going to make any sense. You're going to be the one that ends up embarrassed because he's still going to leave with her. Okay? All right. I'm just, I don't know how much plainer I can make that. Um, the fourth type of man is a divorced man. The problem with the divorced man is that the same thing as the problem with the single man. It's like some woman has wiped them out financially and emotionally they are damaged goods and they're out looking for revenge kills so that means that no matter how hard you work no matter what you do for him or how good you are to him nothing will ever be enough there will never be anything that you can do to make this man understand that you are his ride or die and you would do anything for him so you have to proceed with extreme 
caution when you're dealing with divorced men and single men because the the reason that you need to is because um you know once they have no more use for you i mean they will replace you like you know like there's nothing like they have a sample of platter full of women it's like the buffet over at um what's that restaurant with all the um well anyway one of those buffet restaurants like shoney's or um i can't golden corral that's the one that everybody's going to so like like give me some diabetes to go i mean it's just like diabetes all over for you know for 15 dollars, you can get some diabetes on a plate and you know just go ahead and clog your arteries up and stop your heart but anyway um he's like he has golden corral set up at his house he has a sample platter full of women and as soon as one item has sold out you know they don't have mu enough of it or he's through using you for whatever use he had for you in the first place as soon as that's over he's going to quickly replace that item with another item you're not going to be missed i mean it's just like no matter what what he meant to you you were just another item on his sample platter. So you have to be very, very careful when you're dealing with even single men because of this phenomenon. I don't understand what's going on these days with men and they don't want to commit to one woman. I don't understand that. I mean, I can't multitask. I can multitask my jobs and I can, you know, take care of Kobe's prom situation while I'm in California singing or in California at a movie premiere, whatever I'm doing. I can multitask that, but when it comes to men, I cannot. I have tunnel vision when it comes to man, to men, and I want one man, and if he has me, he's only getting one woman. He's only dating one woman at a time if he's dating me. I will not sit on the sample platter. I will not play the musical chairs dating game and hope that I got a seat at the end of the game when you finally decide to turn the music off. No, sir. It's not going down like that. So I'm first, I'm only, or I'm nothing. It don't matter to me which one you choose. Um, but anyway, so just be careful with these guys. Be careful with the divorced and the single guys. And just the best way to handle them is to keep your eyes and your mind open, but keep your heart and your legs closed. Okay, I don't know how much plainer I can put that. Um, now the number six guy, you know, God love him. You know, this is the down low brother. I mean, you know, and it's like this is not to bash gay men in any shape, form, or fashion. I don't bash gay men. I don't believe in it. I don't tolerate gay bashing. I don't tolerate intolerance. I don't believe in that. I feel like everybody has a right to live their lives the way that they choose to live their lives, and it ain't none of your business. Mind your business. But if you are on the down low, if you like boys and you like girls, and you bring me into it, that's when it becomes my business. The way I feel about it, if you're going to be gay, be gay and leave leave women out of it. I mean, just, just leave women out of it and then you won't have anything to deal with. I mean, it's just like a lot of men are, you know, it's like they fight against it. It's, it's like um, they fight against it and, and sometimes they are overly promiscuous or hyper masculine to try to cover up the fact that they really like men instead of women. And so... Um, or in addition to women, I mean, you know, maybe you want a girlfriend so you can dress her up, you know, and, and, you know, shop with her and that kind of thing. But I know I can do that with my girlfriends. I don't need you to be my girlfriend. I need my man to be my man. And I need my man to be straight, heterosexual and only like girls. Okay. I mean, if gay men want to be gay, that's their business. If gay women want to be, um, be gay, that's their business. I do not have anything against that. I mean, I had somebody to ask me, you know, I'm a judge and somebody asked me one day, they said, if, um, if gay marriage becomes legal in the state of Mississippi, are you going to marry gay couples? I said, honey, this is a courthouse. This is not a church, which means that if it becomes legal for you to marry a goat and that goat can say, bah, in compliance, when I say, do you take this man? Then you can marry a goat if it's legal in the state of Mississippi. Whatever is legal in the state of Mississippi, I have sworn to uphold the Constitution and the laws of the state of Mississippi. And that's what I'm going to do. So if gay marriage becomes legal, don't be looking upside my head when I marry a gay couple. Because that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow the law, whether I agree with it or not. And I'm not saying that I don't agree with it. I'm just saying that no matter what the law is, I am bound to follow the law as a justice court judge. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Anyway, 
I'm through talking about that. We're going to talk again probably tomorrow or the next day. Probably Sunday. I think that's I'll do my blogs on Sunday and Wednesday. And that way we'll have some little time for you to digest things. But thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, inbox me. Judge Cutie at um, Comcast.net. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.